decision. It was Sarah Karen, her IBO world title fight on Saturday against Hannah Rankin. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for doing this interview with me. And I'm loving Scotland. You have a beautiful country. And it's just, you know, a blessing just to even be here right now. Yeah. Um, obviously, huge fight um, with Hannah. Um, how are you feeling sort of ahead of the fight? This is the best I've ever felt before a fight. My weight, I mean, when I weighed in this morning, I'm on weight. So I've weighed in this pre-weigh-in they had before here. I weighed in with all my clothes and everything in my pockets. I'm feeling great. I feel like I peaked at the perfect time in my camp. Yeah. Um, obviously, Hannah, um, sort of similar to yourself, had sort of under the 10 fights and just probably had a few more sort of a world title level. Have you sort of watched them at all? Or um, I mean, of course, you know, I've watched a fight with, you know, I watched her fight before, and I know who Hannah is before we even were going to fight, but um, I don't like studying my opponents. I don't want to overanalyze. Like I said, I let my coach watch it all. He'll do what he needs to do with me in my boxing lessons and on my one-on-ones. And when it comes to, you know, me, I gotta sharpen my tools. Like, we have to make sure all the tools are in line, organized, and sharp, ready to go for war. Um, I see on TV this end of the pond, um, exposure for yourself as well. Right. Yeah, it's great. I mean, as soon as I got the offer, I was ready. I'm, I said, yes, let's do it. Talk to my manager, you guys figure out the details. I'm, I'm game. Um, what made you so keen to, to sort of snap at that chance? First off, I believe in my skill. I know I'm talented. I believe in my abilities. I'm 26 years old. I have eight amateur fights. That's nothing. And I went pro right away. And I've been in the ring with all unbeaten opposition. I've beat an Olympian. I've beat a girl that was on the Olympics. I mean, I have done a lot for my short boxing career so far. Yeah. And it's only going to be longer because I'm still young. I'm still ready to go. Yeah, it's early on, obviously, for a title fight, as I was sort of saying earlier on, but feel ready for this. Now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had 16 weeks to prepare. That's a long time to just sit and work. And I didn't overdo it. You know, I eased nice and in. I was in camp with my teammate, Bertha Aracil, um, before this. So... It was like perfect. I was, you know, stay ready. Don't need to get ready. Yeah. Um, how are you find this sort of being abroad for the first time? I think this was the first time. Oh, it's year. awesome. Yeah. It's cool. I, like, I mean, driving on the left side of the road, I am not going to attempt that yet. I'd have to be here a little bit longer for that. But. Yeah. Enjoy it so far? Yeah, yeah I'm enjoying it. It's, it's, it's a really lovely country. I, I, I can't wait to travel more. Yeah. That was the first time I ever had to get a passport. So. Yeah. Um, obviously from America, how do you sort of get into the boxing? Um, well, when I was young, my mom and dad would always watch Mike Tyson, you know, like he was doing his thing when I was like little and I would watch Mike Tyson and um, stuff like that. So that's how I knew, you know, I was totally aware of the sport. Then, like when I turned 15, I wanted to go to a gym. I was like, ah, I want to try this, you know, maybe my mom would watch fights. And I was going to do the MMA thing before at Team Curran, and my coach, Doug Mango, was at um, Team Curran as the boxing coach, and he came up to me within the first week of me being there, and he could just tell I was an athlete. He was like, do you want to compete? I was like, yeah, I want to compete. So, um, you know, I, he got me good. We did our lessons, and I got to spar the first time with um, the well-known fighter, Rita Figueroa. She um, is a Chicago champion, and has fought for major belts and stuff like that. So I got to spar with her for the first time, got my reality check. But, you know, that's how it is. Uh, Dougie fed me to the wolves. <laughs> I survived. Yeah. Um, and as I discovered before this off camera, uh, brother MMA um, has got the. Yeah, the Pat Curran. Um, he is a two time world Bellator champion and a two time um, tournament of Bellator winner. Um, probably one of the baddest dudes, best boxing in MMA, hands down. His boxing's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, so I've been around fighters.
for a long time, and you know, it's I like it. It's in my blood. I was yeah. born to do this. Yeah. So. What's it like sort of seeing your brother sort of competing and fighting? Yeah, it's it's my brother-in-law. Um, brother -in -law. yeah, but uh, yeah, I've got to go to lots of his fights, and I, you know, I've I've got to spar with him and. I mean, he's awesome. He's he's a great fighter, and I've learned a lot from him too. So you know, he's definitely somebody I look up to. Probably one of the best MMA fighters I've ever known. Got to know, yeah, right? Yeah. I don't know all of them, but I got to know him. Yeah. Um, you're talking about there being shipped up, Chicago being a fighting city. Um, you're talking about the sparring you were getting in before. Yeah. Some high quality. And yeah, everything's high quality out there. Um, Chicago is where it's at. I think that. Chicago is on the map for women's boxing. So, where I'm at, I don't need to travel far. I don't need to beat up my body going on the plane, I, going out to all these different spots. You know, traveling wears on your body. Um, I got to stay at home. I got to enjoy my scene. I got to be relaxed. I got to be calm, cool, collective, and just sharpen up all the artillery. That's why I wear camo. Because I'm a one woman army and I'm here with my army. Mango Combat Sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, how many uh, sort of family relatives, like friends, have you got over for, for this one? Oh, just my mom and my friend, and then my coach and my manager. So it's cool. I mean, hey, it's not quantity, it's quality. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, obviously, just sort of doing the head to head there. Um, Advantage, but I think you have done in your previous fights as well. Um, everybody I fight is taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. I'm like, oh man, I gotta take another giant on today. All right, let's get the job done. Um, no sweat off my back. It's not enough. It's just another day fighting the monsters. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself having the edge of that on Saturday? Um, I just think honestly. I think that I'm a pretty elite fighter and that's what I want to show. I'm very, my skill is, I have good skill. I'm a great fighter and I'm a great athlete. And um, I, I can do more than one sport. I'm kind of like one of those athletes that like, whatever you give me, you could give me a skateboard, you could give me anything. And I'll pick it up like that. So, I'm not gonna say that I have all these better things than Hannah, but I know what I have, and I know that my skill is high. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm focused on me. That's how I am in fights. I'm focused on me. Okay, this is how I see it. When you have a business, right? If you're worried and in everybody else's business, you're not gonna thrive. But if you focus on your business, you're gonna thrive. That's how I see it. So I'm thriving. My business is successful. Um. Why did you sort of turn pro with boxing? Uh, did you consider going down the amateur route at all? Or uh, there, my style is just more fitted for pro. I'm a power puncher. So, and the girls at the, no, I wouldn't even say the girls in the amateur scene were not at my level or anything. It just, like, I was just at a good level where it was like, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna do this for free. Let's make some money and do this. Let's win some, like, belts. Let's be on TV. Let's put boxing on the map for women. And I think I'm young, I think I'm pretty too, so I want to put it on the map. You know, let's be a pro. And I want to be, you know, I really want to be a, a people's champ too. I, I want to be a good role model for other people, other women coming up, just women in general, and for kids. Like, I, I want to, you know, set a good example. Yeah, so I think that's a good way to do it. It's quite a good time for women's boxing, sort of, to establish yourself and get sort of these chances when it's early on and it's been... Can't let these chances slip by. And I, I didn't let it. I'm very... Whatever the outcome's going to be, I'm always going to be happy because this is an opportunity to make dreams become reality. Do you have a day job at all? Sort of yeah, I work in a factory. Um, I micromanage a crew of people and um, I love them. They're awesome. They're so supportive. My job, my boss is super supportive of my boxing career. Everybody goes to my fights. It, I always bring in a big crowd. Um, but yeah, I work full time, Monday through Friday, eight to 10 hours a day. And um, you know, if I'm training eight hours, but still, yeah, I work a full time job. Yeah, it's a tough juggling 
that, but I think that's quite a reality for quite a lot of boxers. Just you know what? The job there. I hope there's a day where I can just do what I love, which is boxing, and I'm working on that. But having a full-time job and training, it makes you hungry, hungry to want to win. So I always want to step up my level more and more and more so I can get myself on the top of the mountain, right? Like I want to be on top of the castle. I want to own it. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, obviously it's a while away, but when you're sort of hanging up the gloves, um, what would you sort of like to have achieved in your time in boxing? Um, honestly, I really want, I want to, if I could at least change one person's life for them to go positive and do positive things with their life, that's going to make me feel really great. I mean, of course I want to steal everybody's loot and take all those titles, <laughs> but that's my own personal thing. But if I could set an imprint on a couple of people's hearts and, you know, make them really believe in themselves, because I really truly believe if you put your mind to it, you can do it, that's what I would like. That would, that would be, that would make me feel good. Yeah. And taking all those belts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sort of see that with other, like, female boxes? Like, um, like, sort of I mean, that? I'd hope, right? Yeah. No, I mean, like, the influence they sort oh, of Oh, influence? People, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. There's, I mean, there's champ, you know, they're, they're kind of my competition now. So, <laughs> um, no, there's, there's champions and there's people that, I'm totally like, wow, you know, like they're really, they're a really good person. Like, oh, they make me think this or that. Um, yeah, there's some, but right now, focus on Sarah. <laughs> no, there, there's some good ones. I'm just not gonna name them because I might be coming for their belts too. <laughs> um, shout out for sponsors, obviously. We were talking about like, yeah. big help for sort of getting you to where you are. Today. Yeah, um, I wanna do a huge shout out to Side Out Sport. Uh, Side Outs Bar and Eatery, um, they hold my meet and greets, they have done so much for me to expose my name to get that out there, that's a local bar by me. Um, Cloud Nine Smoke Shop, they are also great, they help me raffle off stuff and donate money to just, you know, fund my training and everything. Windy City Cryotherapy for my recovery, um, CBD Lion for also my recovery, CBD. Um, Organic supplements, they're awesome too. And then um, Kate Perks from Prate Roofing, she loves boxing, always invests into me as you know a fighter, and I just want to thank all of them. Um, one last one before I let you go. Um, obviously, the away fighter for this one, um, does that bother you at all? Or, um, there, there's a what? Are you the, you're the away fighter, obviously. Um, does that sort of have an impact on you at all? This is how I feel about it. Boxing. Not, I'm not saying Scotland judges are like this. I'm just saying in boxing in general, if you watch a lot of it, you will see very poor judging because, oh, well, they're the champ or we're in this person's hometown. This is a vacant belt. This is not her belt. This is not my belt. We're fighting for the belt to see who's going to get that belt. She wins, great. She won the fight. If I'm saying if it goes to decision. If I win, great. I want to see whoever wins that fight better win the fight. Plain and simple. I, w I don't want to see poor judging because I see it a lot in boxing and we don't work this hard to give away our people's opportunities. You know, you, you don't do that to people. It's just, it's not right. Yeah, I was going to say one fight I can think of off the top of my head recently with Katie Taylor, Delphine Person. Yeah. Obviously, that. I didn't watch it, so people, I don't know. But a lot of people sort of said that was maybe should up have in the air. The I did hear yeah. it was up in the air, but I didn't get to watch it yet. Um, I mean, yeah, it can happen. Yeah, and that's fair. And it's, every, it's every not, <laughs> it's, it, yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've seen it happen with Adrian Broner and uh, Adrian Granados. I thought Granados whooped him, and they gave it to Adrian Broner. I've seen fighters whoop, I've, it's happened to me in the amateurs, it's happened to me in the bros. I have a draw on my record, that was not a draw. I won all those rounds. I don't even think I got hit. But it happens, you can't cry about it. But I do know what it's like putting hard work in and getting it taken away from you. It's not fun. Yeah. Um, well, listen, best of luck on Saturday night. And, uh, yeah, Thank you. Start. It was a pleasure.